Hey there, pre-med. This video on electron affinity versus electronegativity is a sneak peek of my new course on MCAT Essentials. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to define and differentiate electron affinity versus electronegativity and identify their periodic table trends. Remember that all of these periodic trends are rooted in the idea of effective nuclear charge, so if you didn't get a chance to watch that video, please check that out first before moving on to this series. Let's get started by differentiating these two important terms. Electron affinity and electronegativity have very similar trends on the periodic table, but very different definitions. So let's start with defining these terms and what they mean, and then we'll put them on a periodic table in terms of trend. The technical definition of electron affinity is the energy dissipated by a gaseous species when it gains an electron. I'm going to rewrite this as lost instead of dissipate and element instead of gaseous species just because that's what we've been using in these videos. But the idea is that we release a certain amount of energy when we gain an electron. And the more likely we are to gain that electron, the more energy we're going to release, making this what is called an exothermic process, where we release energy or heat from a reaction or from a phenomenon that takes place. So in this case, by releasing energy when gaining an electron, we're exothermic. Now, how likely an atom is to do this depends, of course, on its zeph. All right, so the higher the effective nuclear charge, the higher the electrostatic pull of those protons for a new electron, the more energy is going to be released when this happens, the more favorable this will happen. So if we think about the type of atoms that would probably have a high electron affinity, these are ones that would love to gain an electron and have enough proton pull, nuclear pull, to make it happen. What elements would love to have an electron? Well, our halogens. Our halogens are so close to our magic octet rule. Remember that we want to have eight electrons in our outer valence shell at all times if possible. We want to become noble gases, right? That's always our atomic goal. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, these guys are so close. They're one electron away from becoming that noble gas, which means they have a lot of pull to gain an electron. Right? They are very likely to do so. So these guys are going to have the highest electron affinity. So I want you to think halogens will have the highest electron affinity. Now, technically, if we're familiar with thermodynamics, the exothermic reaction releasing energy or heat usually results in a negative number. But conventionally, we still use positive numbers for electron affinity just because we prefer positive numbers. So just know that it'll have the same magnitude, but it's presented as a positive number because it's technically the energy that's dissipated into the environment, so like absorbed by the environment, as opposed to the heat lost by the atom. So there's a little bit of nuance there, but just know that we usually report it as a positive number. For example, 200 kilojoules per mole would be an example of an electron affinity value. Now, it's important to know that thermodynamically, when we are releasing heat, that ends up being a negative value. So for example, our chlorine atom will often have an electron affinity of around negative 350 kilojoules per mole, energy per mole released. Now, we tend to just report it as a positive value, which technically means the energy that's absorbed by the environment dissipated into the environment by the atom. So just don't stress too much about the sign value here. It's really the magnitude that makes a difference when we're talking about our periodic trend. And so for electron affinity, it matches the trend for the effective nuclear charge. And that's because the more effective nuclear charge, the more electrostatic pull, the more likely we are to grab an electron and add it to our system. And so we're going to have the highest energy released at that point. Drawing the trend for electron affinity on our graph, we'll do it in dark green, puts us again to the right, as we go left to right, we increase our electron affinity. And as we go down, we decrease, right? Or in other words, as we go up our group, we increase our electron affinity. So our overall trend, just like our effective nuclear charge trend, is up and to the right. And again, we're not including the noble gases in our trend here because they're already happy, right? They already are noble gases. They've already got their full octet. So when we're doing these types of periodic trends, just note that we're usually not referring to our noble gases. 
Let's contrast this with electronegativity. Electronegativity is really similar in a lot of ways to electron affinity, where we're talking about the attraction of an atom for an electron. The difference is that electronegativity is a measure of the attraction that an atom has on an electron in a chemical bond. So we have to be in a molecule, in a molecular bond, and we're measuring how much pull that atom has on the electrons in the bond. To measure electronegativity, we use what's called the Pauling electronegativity scale, which starts with our lowest value at 0.7. I'll show you where that is in a second, all the way up to our highest value of four. So you'll have any number between 0.7 and four, it's like 1.2, 2.7, all our measures of electronegativity. You can see it's a very different number than the kilojoules per mole for electron affinity. So this is measuring, hey, how much pull do I have when I'm bonded? And so if we have two atoms that are the same, we're gonna have the same electronegativity, they're gonna be balanced out. But if we have two atoms where one is a higher electronegativity than the other, we're gonna have an imbalance. That higher electronegativity is gonna pull the electrons towards itself. For example, if we have carbon, carbon, equal poles, right? Equal atoms, equal poles. If we have carbon oxygen, well now oxygen has a little bit more of an atomic number and it's closer to our noble gas, right? It just needs two more electrons to get there. So it's going to have a higher effective nuclear charge, which also means it's going to have an increased electronegativity meaning the net result is that those electrons in those bonds are going to get pulled closer to the oxygen, resulting in a polar bond. We're going to talk about polarity in another video, but this is the root of polarities in organic chemistry. In general chemistry is this idea of electronegativity pulling on electrons in a chemical bond. Now it has the exact same trend as electron affinity, where we increase as we go left to right, and we increase as we go down to up, right? So our smallest electronegativity is actually cesium here, it's 0.7, and our highest electronegativity is fluorine at four. Now again, on the very edges, we do have some exceptions. Francium's got a slight exception here, even though it's bigger than cesium. Um, it actually has a similar electronegativity and doesn't often form bonds. And in electron affinity, Chlorine actually has slightly higher electron affinity than fluorine because it's bigger, so it has more pull. Fluorine has such few protons, it has a little less pull. So there's of course little exceptions on the edges of these trends, but the general trend will still apply and you'll be able to follow along based on, okay, which one has the most pull? Which one wants those electrons the most? That one will be the atom that has the highest electronegativity and highest electron affinity. We're starting to build this idea of what do atoms want? What do they desire? And again, they desire that full octet, which means they're really willing to gain electrons if they're over here in the non-metal category. And they're really willing to lose electrons so they don't have a high electronegativity or electron affinity over here in the metals category. In fact, having an electronegativity of less than two indicates a metal. Okay, and that was electron affinity versus electronegativity. We saw that both of these trends really were based on the idea of how much an atom wants to pull an electron. Electron affinity is how much energy is released when that happens, when we gain an electron. And electronegativity is how much pull we have within a chemical bond. All right, and that was two of the most important periodic trends that you'll see on the MCAT. If you found this video valuable, please go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And as always, happy studying.